First thing I want to talk about is LaMelo Ball's very, very unfortunate injury. This is easily one of the most heartbreaking things for me to happen all year. Obviously, there's been a lot of unfortunate stuff injury-wise to happen this year. The Embiid injury really hurt as well. But this one is just really, really rough for me because I'm a massive LaMelo Ball fan. I was, I really liked him coming out of uh, – in, well, into the draft, but I just never expected him to be as good as he was immediately. He's been so fantastic this year, and he was just getting better every single game. So to see that progression just stopped by the season-ending injury really, really hurts to see, and it obviously is really bad for the Charlotte Hornets, who were looking like at the worst they were going to be a play-in team, and at the best they could be a pretty damn solid playoff team, and obviously they still got a good roster, they still got talent on that team, but LaMelo Ball is so important to that roster, and for them to miss him for the rest of the season is just absolutely awful, and it really, really stings. Uh, I do think LaMelo is going to be fantastic next year. This is just a wrist injury, so I don't expect it to really have any long-term effects on his career as a whole. And honestly, now that there will be a lot of time between, uh, well, right now and the start of next year, I think we're going to see LaMelo Ball just be another animal next season. I think he could be a pretty solidified all-star. This kid is so talented, and again, he was getting better every single game. So now that he is going to have a lot of time uh, after he's done recovering to continue to improve, uh, I think he could get a lot stronger uh, during this recovery time. And honestly, I don't really think he even has that much else that needs to work on. Obviously, you want him to just continue to refine his game, continue to get to the basket more, get to the free throw line more. That'll definitely help on uh, continue to try and improve that shooting, which was much better than um, basically everyone expected and definitely much better than I expected. So he'll definitely just be a, an amazing player uh, next year. I'm super excited for the future of LaMelo Ball. But I do kind of want to just talk about the Charlotte Hornets season as a whole now and kind of just what they should do going forward because this is obviously a big, big deal to the team and they're going to be pretty significantly worse uh, than they were before. Uh, but I do think this team could still compete and still be a good roster. And I do think this is, in a kind of a weird way, a big opportunity for certain players to just step up their game and really show what they're made out of. Uh, I think Terry Rozier is going to continue to play fantastic basketball like he has all year. Probably just taking a bit more of a load of the scoring and just continuing to be amazing. He has really been uh, great ever since he's joined the Charlotte Hornets and especially this year like he had a really good year last year too but this year man he's been an all-star caliber player and he's been really heating up uh, as of like the last like 20 or so games so I think he's going to continue to just go on the upward uh, trajectory that he's been on and probably end off the season maybe averaging around like 22 points per game I just really believe in everything I've seen from Terry Rozier and he's been really good this year I think we're probably going to see uh, more of what we saw early on in the season from Hayward kind of before LaMelo emerged where he's being a bit more aggressive as a scorer because he's been super efficient this year playmaking rebounding playing solid defense like he's been a really nice pickup for them but he definitely hasn't been as aggressive as he was early on in the season which makes sense because there's been so many people just playing such good basketball on this team and he is an unselfish guy at the end of the day and he is willing to just do whatever it takes for the team to win uh, and I think that also comes into the fact that now that LaMelo's gone, he's going to do what it takes for the team to win by being a more main scorer on this team and probably going back to averaging around 22-ish points per game. I think uh, Rozier and Hayward are probably going to be the two biggest guys to just take up the scoring load that's going to be gone from LaMelo. And we're definitely going to need to see uh, the playmaking. Everyone's just going to have to do it by committee because there's good playmakers on the team. Uh, for sure, but no one near the level of LaMelo as a playmaker. If Devontae Graham is even on this team after the trade deadline, uh, it'll be a huge moment for him to probably just boost his stock up 
for whatever they can get for him in the offseason because I just don't see him being on this team uh, much longer. But if he can play some good basketball, prove that he can still be a good player like he was last year, then I definitely think uh, some other team will want to trade for him. Uh, so it will definitely be a big moment for him to uh, just take over the offense more as a playmaker and try and fill in that void that's going to be look- gone with the mellow and hopefully get his efficiency back up because it's been pretty uh, rough this year. I think another person who will really just uh, take advantage of the opportunity and the new opportunity that's given is Malik Monk. He's been really good this year, and I think he's proving uh, he can be that six-man type of player that we always wanted Malik Monk to be. He was always someone who you liked what he could be, but he just wasn't very good his first couple of years. His minutes were super inconsistent. Opportunity was inconsistent as a whole, and his play was pretty poor, but he's had a fantastic year this year. He's focusing more on being a bit more of of a spot-up shooter, and he's doing really well in that, shooting almost 42% from three on five attempts per game, which is so much better than what he was shooting earlier on in his career. And I do like him because he still does have the ability to take guys off the dribble. He's a guy who can create his own shot in the mid-range, and I think he can be a bit of like a modern-day Lou Williams type of player. And uh, this will definitely be big for him because that's a lot of minutes in the backcourt that are opening up now. And I think this will really prove what his stance on the team will be going forward. And that'll definitely be uh, a big moment for him. I think P.J. Washington is going to continue to play well. Uh, I mean, it'll kind of suck that Lamelo's not there because those two do have a pretty solid connection. But P.J. Washington's just a very good player at the end of the day. I don't think he'll ever be great or anything. Uh, but he's just one of those guys who I always think is going to be a fantastic role player and one of the best role players in the league as a whole uh, because he's just super smart, shoots the ball well, fits the modern style of the game, plays pretty good defense, And uh, I think he's just going to continue to play well and be a reason why they can still win games. I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe see his point per game average go up a little bit just with him uh, probably having a bit more offensive responsibility. Uh, And Miles Bridges is probably going to be the guy that's hurt the most by the Lamelo Ball injury just because those two's connection is really, really special. And it's so fun watching them on a nightly basis. Uh, But... Miles Bridges has still had a great year as a whole, and I still think he's going to continue having a pretty good year. And just as a whole, like this Hornets just nucleus is really, really nice. Obviously, Lamelo's going to be the guy who's headlining it, but there's a lot of good young players on this team. And Miles Bridges emerging is definitely a big part of it. He's been so efficient this year. 61.5% true shooting percentage. Still needs to improve, obviously. Like, I want to see him uh, definitely take steps on the defensive side of the ball. But his offense is really polishing. He's becoming a better shooter. uh, And he's just so good of a fit for this team in the future. I just do wonder now what they should do, really, just as far as winning-wise. Because it's like... They're probably going to fall behind some other teams. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Pacers jump them, especially as they hopefully start to get more healthy. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bulls jump them, because uh, I could see the Bulls maybe making a move or two at the trade deadline. And, but it's like, I don't think they're a worse team than the Raptors, even with LaMelo injured, unless the Raptors just start playing much better basketball than they have this year. I don't think they're a worse team than the Cavs. So they're kind of at this weird purgatory where they're not really good enough to be a playoff team without LaMelo, uh, but they're also not bad enough to get a top pick. So maybe you trade away some of your assets right now. Like maybe you do get rid of Devontae Graham, knowing that it will probably hurt your team because you're not really going to have the playmaking that you did before. But you just kind of get rid of that situation as a whole where you don't even have to worry about uh, finding a team to uh, get him in the future. And you just get rid of him now. You set what your team is going to look like going forward. Uh, You could definitely do that, or you could continue to compete. And honestly, I think either way, this team is still set up great for the future. Like If they want to maybe lose some more games, try and get a big man, because that is the thing that they do really need. Like Obviously, they're not going to get like Evan Mobley unless they really just fell off and then got like super lucky. 
Uh, but I do think the big man position as a whole is the thing they can improve the most. Like Cody Zeller's a cool player. Don't get me wrong. He's a very solid role player, but he's a role player at the end of the day. And if they could get a center going forward, I've heard some Miles Turner rumors, which I absolutely love. I'm not even the biggest fan of Miles Turner as a player, but I think that fit is so beautiful. And I just think that's the one last piece uh, that they need to put together to really have this team looking great in the future. So if they can do that, uh, I think the Hornets are one of the best young teams in the NBA. Obviously sucks that LaMelo's injured. It's really, really sad uh, to see him be out for the rest of the season. Hoping for a speedy recovery from him. But I still think this team is going to be solid now. Has a lot of young guys who can step up in the absence of him. And if they can get the center of the future, this team is going to be really, really nice.